What up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your guy. Some, some, some. Hit the keys. And in today's video, I have the most trash music production company tier list. Uh, make sure if you guys do like this content, though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell so every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. But with no further delay, let's get into this tier list, baby. Some, some, some hit the key. All right, guys. So, in order to put this list together, I actually asked a bunch of you guys what you guys thought. Um, and I got an overwhelming response of companies that people thought were trash. Um, so, that's what we're going to do with this tier list right here. Uh, we got five different tiers in this list. We got hot garbage. Uh, we got still trash. You know, it's still, it's still trash. It may not be hot garbage, but it's still trash. We got meh. We got could do better, and we got not bad at all. Um, here's the list of the suspects that we have down here at the bottom. Um, so let's go ahead and get right into this. I guess the first company we're gonna start off with is Avid. Um, so we're not gonna say Pro Tools, we're gonna say Avid, the actual company, uh, because Pro Tools isn't the one that really did anything, it's all Avid, right? Um, so for Avid, I'm going to put Avid in the still trash category. You guys may be wondering why I think Avid is trash. It's because of the fact that um, their pricing model. So today, um, they just changed their pricing model to where you can get perpetual licenses again, but they hide it. So when you come here at their site, they got three different bundles here. Um, so you can do the, the Pro Artist, which is 99 a year. They got the Pro Tools Studio, which is $2.99 a year. And then they got the, the Ultimate Bundle, which is $5.99 a year. Um, so, you know, I mean, for a year, that's a lot. Um, but if you do come over here to the website, you can come over to like Vintage King or B&H, Guitar Center, um, all of those places, and you can get the Perpetual License. Um, it's still $5.99. And with the Perpetual License, it's only got one year of updates. So you know you're gonna have to give Avid another $200 or $300 to get those updates that you're gonna eventually need. Um, other reasons why Avid is trash is because Avid has AAX. So if you're a developer, you have to pay a whole bunch of extra money in order to just develop your plugins for, uh, for Pro Tools. And then like it's got a super clunky GUI. Um, it's not, I mean, I don't wanna say it's not intuitive because it's been around forever, but it's like, the updates are just like, meh. It's just like the whole company, Avid, you know, they've always left a bad taste in our mouth, especially with the pricing. And you hear people who use Pro Tools, you know, they sound like, some of them sound like snobs. They're like, Duh. well, you shouldn't have a problem paying $599 a year if you wanna be a mixer. You can make that in one session. Well, some people just make music for fun. They might've went to school and done music and maybe they don't do music full time no more but they learn how to, you know, they paid to go to Full Sail or wherever it is that they went and they use Pro Tools still. So they just want to make music at home. So it's like $5.99 a year was definitely too much. I guess they've kind of amended it now, but it's still been the grip since, you know, it's been per not perpetual licenses. So still trash. <laughs> uh, the next company I have here is Behringer. We're going to give Behringer... We're gonna give Behringer a could do better. I'm gonna give Behringer a, a two, a could do better instead of a man because it's like at least Behringer has some negatives and some positives. A lot of people don't know there was the whole scandal with the employees getting sick. Obviously, they make their uh, equipment in China. They use cheap labor, all that good stuff. I'm not gonna be the one to cast the first stone because I have on some Jordans right now. Um, a lot of people are using iPhones. A lot of people are using you know your TVs, all that other stuff. A lot of this technology comes from China, so I'm not going to cast that stone because, you know, I'd be a hypocrite there. But the thing about Behringer that kind of sucks where it, they could do better is they don't really, they're not intuitive. They don't have like a bunch of their own new stuff. Now, what they do do that's good for the producer community is that they do create good emulations that are cheap but they are cheap. So a lot of times like the knobs may break or the board may break down early because you're getting a $200 emulation of a $2,000 board. 
So could they do a little better? Maybe they could spend a little extra money um, to make the boards just a little bit better um, so that they don't fall apart so fast. Maybe they could come out with some new stuff that they've created that's just not a copycat of somebody else. But some stuff that they have is decent. I have some Behringer monitors. They're okay. I have some old school Behringer um, show speakers that I sold. Those were okay. They worked well for me for years. Um, so Behringer does do some good things, but there are some things that they could definitely do better. Let's go ahead and just address the elephant in the room. So we got Unison Audio right here. Unison Audio is definitely going to be in the hot garbage category. Uh, they are the top tier of the hot garbage. Um, if you've never heard of, if you've heard of Unison Audio, you've seen the commercials. Uh, Unison Audio is in the hot garbage category for a lot of reasons. A, because basically they, they, they try to scam you, they FOMO the mess out of you, um, so they give you the fear of missing out. Um, they overcharge for their plugins, so they still have MIDI Wizard at like $300 or $400, and there are so many better um, chord creating plugins, melody creating plugins, MIDI creating plugins, uh, the Unison uh, MIDI pack, they were ripping people off with that when you could just go to your computer, your DAW, and you can get all the chords in your DAW. Um, their copy and paste advertising is trash. So um, all they do for every plugin that comes out is they just copy and paste it. They're charging like $300 for Sound Doctor, which is like a $60 plugin. Drum Monkey's like $300. It's like a $70 plugin. Um, I mean, like, I get that you can charge whatever it is that you want to charge for a plugin, but when you're targeting um, newer producers and you're making them think that this is the greatest thing and this is what they need to get placements and all that other stuff while breaking their bank, it's just ridiculous. And then the ads, we've talked about the ads, the spamming your freaking email. It's like every day I'm getting spammed. I've unsubscribed from Unison a bunch of times. At this point, I've just stayed some stay subscribed because when they tell me about the new plugin, I'm just going to drop a deuce on that. Um, so Unison Audio is definitely at the top of the hot garbage list. Um, next up, we have Output. So this one's a little bit personal for me. Um, output makes decent stuff. But let me tell you a little story. So I used to do some sponsored content for Output. Um, and I had this girl who may or may not have stalked me. She definitely was stalking me. And she woke up one day and she was upset and she started emailing every company that I work with, right? So I've been doing a whole bunch of stuff for them, ads, all kinds of stuff, right? And so she sent out this email right here. She sent them this email that basically says, I know this may be a random email, but I've had a little bit of concern about one of the people who advertises for you in the last few weeks. I would like to remain anonymous in this situation with fear of being ridiculed and harassed in real life. You're the one who's harassing me. I'm not, I, I, I hadn't talked to this girl in like two and a half months. And I didn't even live in the same state as her anymore. So long story short, uh, this girl just made this message talking about the creator is me. Um, I know he can act the way he wants to on his platform, uh, but what concerns me is to see his content and uh, that fact that I associate with them. So she linked some live streams when I was drinking on stream, which I'm 42 years old. I can drink if I want to. There's no rules against that. Um, and she basically said, I don't want to cancel them. If I wanted to cancel them, um, I would just, you know, make a YouTube post and I would share all this stuff on Facebook and all these other places and so on and so forth. Now, what's crappy about that is that if you, they, they messaged me and they told me to uh, take all of my affiliate links out and everything, they canceled, the, they canceled the contract, but they still have this up on their site. And what makes it even worse is that we all know about output. We know about some of the shady firings y'all have had. We know about all the office parties y'all used to have where y'all used to get all lit and all this other stuff. We know about that stuff. So it's like, how are you not even gonna contact me after I've worked with y'all for a year and then you're just gonna take some stalker's letter and then y'all are gonna be like, oh, we're done messing with this dude, whatever, trash. So for me, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say that all their products are bad, but because of that, they're still fucking trash. All right, up next, we got Audio Acoustica. So Audio Acoustica, if you guys don't know, they make a bunch of effects. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put Audio Acoustica in the meh category. 
Because the biggest issue with Audio Acoustica is like their CPU usage is ridiculous. So it's like, no matter what computer I use any of their plugins on, like I liked Silver, I thought it was a fire plugin, but I can only use one instance of Silver on the track. If I try to get two on the track, it's killing my computer. Even on my Mac, it doesn't work well. So it's like, and their, their, their download manager is trash as well. Like I know everybody's sick of download managers. I'm not gonna knock plugins because they have down, download managers because at this point, everybody has download managers, but theirs is the absolute worst. And then like, again, all their plugins are so CPU intensive, you can't even just buy a bunch of them and use them because you have to render out tracks, you have to do a bunch of stuff. So it's like, okay, what's a good plugin if you can't use it? You know what I mean? It's a meh plugin. So that's where we're gonna put Audio Acoustica. Um, up next, we got In Music. This one I'm kind of torn on too, cause I'm not sure if I wanna give In Music meh, or if I wanna give them still trash. Oh, uh, this is a hard one. We're gonna go ahead and give In Music still trash. And it's not all of the companies under In Music, it's the parent company In Music I'm talking about. So if you're not aware, um, in music, um, they actually, they have a bunch of brands. So they bought a bunch of brands. They are over air technologies, Akai, Alesis, Alto, um, Arkeos, uh, BFD, Denon, um, all this stuff, M audio, Numark. Um, so they got a lot of companies in which they run, right? So I don't have no beef with Akai. I don't got no beef with Alesis. I don't got no beef with Air. It's necessarily, it's more so the people that run the company. And here's the reason why. So when you look at, when In Music buys a company, they snake out everybody who worked for the company before. So this is Wikipedia speaking. This isn't even just my words. This is what people know. In 2005, O'Donnell purchased the Akai Professional Musical Instrument Division, previously spun off from Akai Electronics, Musical instrument designer Roger Lynn has accused that immediately following the acquisition, Akai ceased all royalty payments owed to him and that O'Donnell sent legal threats warning him from attempting to collect further royalties. So Roger Lynn is the dude that created the NPC, right? So somebody else buys the company, he's supposed to get royalties off the NPC because he created the NPC. And the guy from N Music was like, nah, I don't want to pay this guy anymore because I own the company. But this dude created the NPC. So like your new contract doesn't supersede whatever contract that you had before. You can't just cross it off. And unfortunately for Roger Lynn, obviously he doesn't have more money than in music. So he can't take them to court and he can't sue them because ultimately they'll just bleed him dry for all the money that he does have. So that's like, that's trash. That's absolute trash. And then like Moog Music. So just as of today, it's come out that all, most of the people in Moog Music here in America got fired. And so now they're gonna outsource all of um, the Moog making of those synthesizers and all that stuff to China. Um, they're gonna use cheaper equipment. They're gonna use cheaper labor. They're gonna use all that stuff um, to make cheaper boards and send us cheaper boards. And we know that's what's gonna happen because otherwise, why would you not keep the people who've been working for the company for 20, 30 years and so on and so forth. So. It's for me, it's hard here on the where to place them because Akai and Alesis and all that other stuff, all of the, the companies underneath them, I mean, I don't have no beef with them. It's just in music and the decisions that they choose to make. Up next, we got Native Instruments. Uh, I don't got no beef with Native Instruments. I'm not even gonna hold you guys. I'm probably gonna put Native Instruments in the could do better category because there are a few issues with native instruments. So like um, the machine, I mean, do I even need to talk about the machine? Machine owners know what it is. Like it doesn't get the proper updates. Um, it's got all kinds of glitches. I mean, if you just Google machine and then you look, there's just so many problems with the machine. So three major problems, native instruments machine needs to fix. Why stop using native instruments machine? Major issues with machine plus. Um, I'm taking apart my machine and hopefully fixing it. Um, and then just keep scrolling down and there's just all these forums like bugs and problems, um, you know, storage mode problems. There's problems with the knobs. Um, there's problems with latency, problems with it crashing. Um, software won't install. It keeps turning off. 
um, problems in the human environments. I mean, there's just a ton of different issues with the machine, and that is native instruments. Um, and then another issue with native instruments has to be the fact that they just dropped the brand new uh, S series Mark III, and it's not compatible with the machine. It doesn't have faders still, and it still doesn't have drum pads. But I will say I don't have any problem with native instruments because I use their software. I think that their interfaces are good. Um, I think their software is good. I think that they do good stuff with like contact. They give away free stuff. Um, so they'll give you like, you know, you can get Guitar Rig 7, a free version, a stripped down version. You can get the Contact 7 player, which allows you to put so many different sample libraries and you can do so many third party sample libraries. They give you a bunch of free sounds. Um, I like the fact that they bought um, Isotope and now they offer all kinds of bundled deals and they offer more deals now than it seems like they were offering before. They're always dropping new products. They're always dropping new sound packs. They're always dropping new, new VSTs. So it's like, I can't give them meh. I can't give them trash. I can't give them garbage because they are doing a lot of good stuff on the software side. It's just that they need to get that hardware piece put together so that, you know, they can not be bad at all. You know what I'm saying? Up next, we got Studio Linked. Um, so uh, this one's hard for me. Um, for me, it's in between still trash and meh. Um, we'll put it, we'll put it at meh for now. Um, the reason why I would put Studio uh, Linked at meh is because I've done some reviews for Studio Linked, so I like Studio. I still think that that's a good uh, plugin. It's like a cloud-based. Um, sample library, I feel like that's a good piece of software, right? But then they've had stuff like MidiFriend. They dropped that. I did a review on that. And it's like they just completely stopped service of that. So they don't service it no more. Um, if you had a subscription to it, you know, and you were into that, they just canceled it for you. But the biggest reason why I would have to put Studio Link in the meh category, and there was a lot of complaints and a lot of, um, a lot of people talking about this um, when I ask you guys, it's that when they dropped Rompler, Rompler wasn't ready to go. So Rompler wasn't even probably 50% ready. It wasn't 40% ready. Um, it needed a lot of work to it. And basically they took people's money and they took subscriptions and all this stuff. They took people's money for a product that was still not even close to being done in beta form. Um, and so then I seen the forums. And so I can't sit up here in front and lie to you guys. I saw all those forums. I was in the Rompler um, Discord and all that other stuff. And they were fighting with the people in the Discord about giving refunds on a product that was basically a beta product. So a lot of people weren't getting refunds. A lot of people weren't getting their money back, but it wasn't their fault. All they wanted to do was get um, Rompler so they could make their own plugin. But at the end of the day, a lot of the developers and the admins and stuff in the group were going hard on the people who didn't do anything wrong. These people did nothing wrong. All they did was give you their money for a product they thought was complete and they thought was done and ultimately had a bunch of bugs and a bunch of issues with it. So I honestly don't know where it's at right now. Maybe I'll check back into it and let you guys know in a future video, uh, but that's why I would put them in the mad category. <laughs> uh, two clicks. We're going to go ahead and put that in the hot garbage category. Sorry, Kyle. It is what it is. That's where it belongs. Um, so two clicks is Kyle beats is, um, plugin company. And the reason why this would go into the hot garbage category is because we all remember when the drip plugin came out. Um, it was an overpriced plugin, um, that was basically aimed at newer producers and it was overpriced. So it was definitely overpriced when all it was, was a multi-effect plugin that just had basic, um, effects like reverb distortion flanger and then it had a few presets and it was nothing special but it was like i believe when it first came out it was like eighty dollars seventy nine dollars ninety dollars and it should have been a thirty dollar plug -in. now the price of it's a little bit cheaper um but it's still that cost and then we also have uh an issue with like this new plugin so before we get to that plugin we have this x dynamic imager plugin it's 25 dollars. this is not a 25 dollar plugin I, I got this plugin um, I think it was free when he first rolled it out. I wouldn't even use it if it was free. It's not a good imager. So for $25, it's just, it's just not worth it. I wouldn't even pay a dollar for it. And then when you come over here, like let's say you actually want to get Sandbox, right? So how much does Sandbox cost? Well, you can't find sound by the price of it anywhere on the website. And so then boom, when you come into Sandbox, 
Um, okay, okay, bam, we're here. How much does it cost? And so you're scrolling and you're looking to see how much it costs. You're looking to see how much it costs. They tell you it's got 20 brand new effects for free, but retro, it's just, you know, a lo-fi effect, a bit crusher, vibe, uh, it's just the LFO effect, chorus, phaser, and dimension. So none of these are like new effects. They're just basic effects. Um, and then, you know, it says it has 8,000 samples. I can't answer that question because I don't know. Um, but I still want to find out the price. I can't find out the price of this thing. So let's see. Download Sandbox. Okay. Oh, snap. I got to give you my email address in order to find out the price? Are you serious? I got to give you my email address so you can spam me to give me my price. I got one question. Why, Kyle? Why? So, uh... Once we enter in an email address, it's $147. So it does have a 30 day free trial. I'll give you that. But I do know in the past it's had a lot of glitches. I've, I haven't seen anybody use this plugin at all. Um, I've seen it when they initially rolled out. Av did a review on it. Weaver talked about it. He bought it, did a review on it. And they were both like, I seen their, the reviews and it just was not working. It just wasn't the greatest plugin. So again, we're getting a lot of promo and all these videos in your face. Now, I'm not going to lie to you guys. For me, that's not a bad thing because whenever you see the, the, the advertisements on my videos, uh, I'm getting <laughs> paid for those advertisements. So I'm not mad at them for all the advertisements. But they did make me get YouTube premium because I just got sick of seeing Unison ads and I got sick of seeing two click ads. Two clicks and it's not perfect, my G. Up next, we got Splice. I'm going to go ahead and throw Splice into the meh category. Um, we throw Splice into the meh category because the thing about Splice that sucks is that Splice has, when you have a subscription, how do my credits not roll over? You know what I mean? Like, how can I not, if I have 200 credits and I use 50, my credit should roll over till the next month because I've paid for those credits. I pay for 200 credits each month. I'm not renting the credits. I'm paying for the credits. So I should get those credits. The new GUI, uh, when I last stopped using Splice, was trash. Um, the search feature isn't very good. You know, you search for something, you're not going to find exactly what you want. Um, so a lot of times you could type in hip hop and it's going to give you pop stuff, or it just doesn't give you the stuff that you want. Um, a lot of the sounds are like the same sounds, they're recycled. A lot of the samples are over-processed. Um, like a lot of the vocal chops, you can't use the vocal chops because Splice doesn't do a good job of figuring out how they can register the sounds and then they can make them for public use. So nobody can copyright those sounds. So somebody will get a vocal chop and then they'll copyright their beat by uploading it to DistroKid. And now you can't use that in your beat because it's already been sent up to DistroKid and somebody else has a copyright on it. So it's like the first, it's like, it's like a, a you're searching for gold. You know what I'm saying? The first person to find it wins. So the first person that submits that, that, that upload or that sample or whatever it is, is the person that's going to get credit for it. And then they'll be able to copyright claim everybody else. And a lot of times those people don't even know that they're copyright claiming people because it's a third, uh, third party party. Um, that's the one that's actually uh, doing the, the copyright claiming and stuff like that. They might not even get a notification. No. And then a lot of people don't even care. They're like, well, you know what I'm saying? I can get paid off this person's too. Or people will just think, well, I uploaded it first, it's mine, or whatever the case is. So Splice needs to kind of figure that out and get it together um, so it's more enticing for more producers to want to use it and so people aren't getting copyright claim. All right, up next we got Waves. So we'll go ahead and... Ah, this might be a little bit controversial, but I'm going to go ahead and throw Waves in the could do better category. Because the thing with Waves is... Waves doesn't make bad plugins and Waves makes plugins that are budget priced. So with Waves, you can get, you know, plugins for $29. Yes, they do, do do FOMO and all that other stuff, but they still have good plugins at a decent price. The problem with Waves is that their upgrade plan is ridiculous. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. So as we look here at my Waves uh, profile, it's telling me for me to do my renew up plan for all the plugins I have, it's gonna be $221. But keep in mind, this is a yearly cost. So every year, Waves, or every time Waves updates their, their plugins, which is basically every year, they want me to give them $221. Not gonna be able to do it, fam. So as we're looking here, 
Um, the main thing that I would update would be um, this gold package right here. So it would be this gold bundle. So the gold bundle cost me $180 when I got it. I got it on sale. Look at the price here, $221. If I take this off, $131. So they want me to give them $90 basically a year to update my gold bundle, which is absolutely ridiculous, right? That's ridiculous. And then when you're looking at a lot of these other plugins, they were like $29. So lo-fi space, um, they want what, $9. Uh, Manny Maraquin, they want $9, which I guess that's not necessarily that bad. Um, so I'm not necessarily mad at the $9. I can see that every time that they have to upgrade um, because we have to think that we do want our stuff to stay up to date um, and it does cost money for them to update the products. So we can't necessarily be mad that they wanna charge people for their work because it's like, I've given you the plugin I shouldn't have to update it no more. Like if you bought this plugin 10 years ago, I shouldn't still be doing updates on you for a $29 plugin. So that's something that we, the consumer, have to understand too. You paid $29, $30 for the plugin, you can't expect updates for the rest of your life for 20 years. That's just, that, that in, that's not a good return on investment for them. And then Waze was extra shady with trying to switch everything over to subscription-based overnight without telling us. We ain't forget that yet. So. I mean, again, Waves has some good plugins, they have some good stuff, but it's like the prices that they wanna charge on these upgrades are too much. Um, it's always FOMO on their accounts. And the fact that we can't really trust y'all after what y'all tried to do before. And speaking of upgrade plans, I do have one honorable mention. They're not necessarily a music production company, but they are, but they're not, but they are. And that would be Apple. A lot of y'all were going ham talking about Apple when I was talking about what company is the worst music production company. The reason why I would say that Apple is an honorable mention and I didn't put them in here is because Logic is fire, GarageBand is fire. I ain't got nothing to say about either one of them dogs. They both go. I use Logic. That's what I record into. Nothing negative to say about Logic. But the thing that sucks about Apple is that they always have a new uh, update to their their OS, you know what I'm saying, their operating system. So since they're always updating their operating system, that's why Waves has to always do an upgrade plan because they got to catch up to freaking Mac. And that's why a lot of these companies have, some of these companies are charging for the updates is because it's Mac, you know what I'm saying? Y'all want to use Mac, I use Mac, you know, but y'all want to use Mac, well, it's Apple's fault, you know what I'm saying? Because they continually update their OS system. Slow down, we don't need that many updates, Apple. Y'all can, can slow your roll. I ain't updated since I got my, uh, my M1 Mac. All right, so up next, we have Teenage Engineering. And y'all already know that's coming up here to the hot garbage category for me. Um, the reason why it's hot garbage is because Teenage Engineering overcharged for everything. Everything costs too much. What do you mean everything costs too much? Well, they put together this field desk uh, earlier this year, if you guys weren't aware, and they're charging $1,600 for this recycled uh, lightweight uh, aluminum and then for, for mica board. Bam. <laughs> Come over to my house. I'll make that shit to you for you for $200. And I'm still getting over $1,600 for this. And they're saying it's like a modular desk that you can add pieces to it, but you have to pay for all those modular pieces. And then like when you look at their synthesizers, so as we look here at the OB-1 field, um, the OB-1 field um, basically costs $2,000. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a little much. I just don't feel like uh, this is a $2,000 synthesizer. I have an ASM Hydrosynth that I would use over this if I had this, or I would probably use my, my Yamaha Modi X over this as well. I mean, I know you can do a lot of stuff with this and I know it's portable, but $2,000 for this, and it's not like it's like super, uh, it's not like the build on the build quality on it is super great or anything like that. You know, it's not made out of gold or anything. And then to keep with the everything from these guys is too much, they just dropped this speaker right here, right? And maybe not just dropped, but the speaker is $649. Bam, look at this. It looks like a lunch pail. It looks like somebody stuck two tweeters in a lunch pail. And they sincerely want, you know, $649 for this. It's just ridiculous. Like, teenage engineering, you hipsters need to cut it out. Stop. Stop giving these dudes money so they can bring the price down. You know, you guys can bring, you can drive the price down if you stop. Stop it now.
And the last company that I have here in the most trash music production company is IK Multimedia. A lot of people were complaining about IK Multimedia, but I'm not even going to hold y'all. I'm putting IK Multimedia right here. Not bad at all. In my opinion, they're not bad at all. I mean, like, I, I, like the biggest complaint about IK Multimedia is the, 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 the download manager. But everybody has a download manager now. Everybody has a download manager. Roland, Arturia, Waves. I mean, whatever company you're thinking of that's a major company, they all have download managers now. So if that was the complaint five years ago before everybody had download managers, that shouldn't be the problem anymore. I understand that sometimes the first time that you ever download stuff, it's a little confusing. But it's after you've downloaded one thing, you don't, it's easy after that because you learn that you just download the product first, then you click over two tabs, and then you download the sound. And that's how you get your download. I mean, it, it goes right into the spot for you. Everything goes where it needs to go. I only had a problem downloading one thing on IK Multimedia, and that was the absolute first thing I ever downloaded. But the thing about IK is that they always give away free stuff. So they're always giving away free cents. They just gave away a Philharmonic 2, and it's still free if you see this video until the end of the month. They always give away Centronic stuff. They have free stuff. So they have uh, Sample Tank CS, which is free. They have um, Amplitude CS, which is free. They have Tone X that you can get in that Amplitude, and Tone X models is other people's mod or amp modeling. So there's like, I believe, 150,000, 200,000. There might even be a million. I could be off. I should have checked that number. Different uh, models of amps that you can just download for free and you can get all these fire amps and all these fire sounds, all this stuff. And then like, I know that they have a couple synthesizers that may not have been the greatest because they're just now getting into the gear world. But dude, they got the iRig, which is a fire... Um, uh, interface that you can take on the go with you and use in your phone, your, you know what I'm saying, your tablet, whatever it is. And then the MTMs, them little monitors are bangers. I got some of those and I'm about to do a review on them. I've had them for a while now and they're absolutely fire. I've got the Precision 6.5, 6 the big monitors that they have. And those are some of the best monitors that I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm not saying that the cap, I mean, I don't understand why people hate IK so much. I understand that that first time you download is a little bit difficult, but after that, you should know. It's really easy. Just download the instrument first, then download the sounds. You're good to go. I know another issue is the $9 if you've let the time lapse on uh, how long before you've downloaded sounds or whatever, but it's no different than what I said with Waves. You know, they have to update too so that you can use their products on new OSs and stuff like that. And so you can't expect to get something free forever. Um, you know, it's $9 for the update. But one thing that's positive about them is that they give you nine authorizations when a lot of companies only give you two or three authorizations. You might only get one, you might only get two. With IK, you're going to get nine. So I know uh, y'all weren't expecting that there, but I mean, that's my honest to God thoughts. I feel like they're not bad at all. I actually like IK Multimedia. So. Um, that's my tier list. Um, I'm pretty sure that down in the comments, it's going to get a little toxic. This might be the most toxic comment section ever, uh, but let me know what I missed. Tell me what you guys think is the most trash companies out there for music production. Um, you know what I'm saying? But make sure if you guys do like this content, though, you drop a whole elbow on that like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell. So every time we bring you guys a new video, you can be the first to see. Appreciate you guys' time as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.